All right, today we're looking at a couple extended response questions involving acids and bases. And this first one here, propanoic acid, uh, if you look at questions 18 through 22 on your acid-base um, in-class test, the extended response part, you could see that there. So you can reference that if you need to check um, on the answers to these questions. All right, so we'll look at together here um, this question, and this question is question number one from 2011. And what you see here is you have three beakers, and each beaker contains 25 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution. And you can see that right there, 25 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution. In the first beaker, you have hydrochloric acid. In the second beaker, you have ammonia. And in the third beaker, you have ammonium chloride. And so some thoughts should be bubbling through your head. Okay, strong acid, hydrochloric acid in our first beaker. So we know that it ionizes completely. A weak base in beaker two. So we know that that does not ionize completely. And then in beaker three, we have ammonium chloride, a salt water solution. And that should take you back to our little don't be so soddy lab. And so we've got chloride ion coming from strong and ammonium ion coming from weak. So we have a weak, strong salt. So those kinds of thoughts should hopefully be bubbling through your head. This is a 10 point question. And in all honesty, the first seven are pretty straightforward if you're ready for it. And you could easily get them. And then there's, of course, the extension really challenging parts to get those last three points. But first up, it says, determine the pH of the solution in beaker one and justify your answer. So again, you have to remember, hydrochloric acid, strong acid, completely ionizes. So whatever the concentration of the solution is, is the concentration of hydronium. So you just have to take the negative log of the 0.1 molar, and you get a pH of 1. Now, I wrote it as 1.000, if you remember, technically, however, however many sig figs are in the concentration of hydronium, that's how many decimal points, or numbers after the decimal that you report. Kind of think they'd be okay on this question if you just said pH of 1, but just as a reminder, I put that there. Now the second part asks us, and, and shows us, okay, in beaker 2, we have the reaction ammonia plus water makes ammonium plus hydroxide. And it gives us the value of Kb for our ammonia to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth at our magic 25 degrees Celsius. So first up, I want you to write the Kb expression for the reaction and then calculate the hydroxide concentration. So the reaction is right there and you just need to write the uh, KB expression, and again, remember that water will not be included in our expression. And so you can see here that we have KB is equal to products over reactants, ammonium concentration times hydroxide over the ammonia concentration. Now remember, Ka and KB, when we're doing these weak acid, weak base problems, you can always pretty much assume that your Ka or Kb is equal to x squared over the concentration of the acid or base. So here you see Kb is equal to ammonium times hydroxide, which x squared, because they're a one-to-one -one ratio in the equation. So we, they're the same concentrations. And then since it's a Kb expression, it's over the concentration of the base, which we know because it gave it to us back up here at the top, 0.1 molar. So this next question, calculate the hydroxide concentration, you simply have to say Kb is equal to x squared over the concentration. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, multiply by 0.1, take the square root. And there you see the hydroxide concentration is 1.3 times 10 to the negative third. Now they could, of course, ask you at this point, you know, for pH or something, so you could just take the negative log of hydroxide, get the pOH, subtract from 14. So that's something they could ask you, but they didn't here. 
All right, now beaker three, we have ammonium plus water makes ammonia plus hydronium. And we want to know the value of Ka for the ammonium ion. And even though we have these two separate beakers, remember that ammonium and ammonia are conjugate acid base pairs. And so we just, we were given Kb for ammonia, and that was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So if you remember, of course, we have that magic connection of Kw. And your Ka is going to be equal to Kw divided by Kb. And so we get 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Even though they're in different beakers and it's a different reaction, blah, blah, blah. But Ka for ammonium is equal to Kw divided by Kb for the ammonia. Okay, again, we're still kind of in to, um, I thought those were all pretty attainable, as long as we remember some of the basics, pun intended, of our weak acid-base chemistry and our strong acid-base chemistry. And now we're going to get a little more challenging for these next couple parts. So here it says the contents of beaker 2 are poured into be beaker 3, and we stir that solution. We assume that the volumes are additive, and all that means is that we had 25 mils in each, so 25 plus 25, we now have 50 milliliters total. So now we want to know the pH of the resulting solution. And so when you look at your two reactions here, okay, you're combining this beaker, oh sorry, a little hard to read, this beaker with this beaker. So you're combining ammonium and ammonia, water, and hydroniums and hydroxides. Okay, so you're just basically mixing the two same solutions. And then there's some spectator chloride ions, but we're not worried about those. So what you kind of do here is look at my Ka expression. And my Ka expression says I've got ammonia times hydronium over ammonium. But since we're adding the same amount of ammonia and ammonium, these things are the same, and they just cancel out. So essentially, that means your Ka is equal to your hydronium concentration. And so because of that, we know that we can just simply take the negative log of our Ka here, and we get 9.25. Again, that's tr a tricky point to get. That's a, a tough question. But... The little hint that AP gives you is, hey, they made you solve for Ka up here, okay, in part one. Calculate Ka. Why did they have you do it? Because you're going to need it in, point two, in part two. So that was their little hint of trying to steer you down that path. I know, so nice of them. All right, let's finish up here again with another tricky part. Contents of beaker 1 are poured into what we just made, the 50 milliliters when we poured beakers 2 and 3 together. The, that resulting solution is now stirred, so we have everything all together. Volumes are additive. So again, we had the 50 mils from beakers 2 and 3. We add in the 25. Now we're up to 75 mils total. Is this new solution, this resulting final solution, an effective buffer? Well, you just added strong hydrochloric acid into this ammonium-ammonia mixture. Now, the ammonia-ammonium is a good buffer solution because when I pour in ammonia, I'm sorry, when I pour in a strong acid, ammonia reacts with it, okay? If I would pour in a strong base, then the ammonia sorry, the ammonium would react with it. So that's a good buffer solution when you poured beaker 2 and 3 together. However, now that we dumped in the hydrochloric acid, you can see that it reacts with the ammonia, essentially taking it all away. Bye-bye. And so that's what, you know, all of the added hydroniums from solution 1 reacts with the ammonia and pretty much 
gets rid of it, turns it into ammonium, and so now that's all we pretty much have left. We only have half of a buffer system. Yes, if that if you added base, the ammonium part would work, but we don't have both parts of our buffer system. You could also maybe try and say, you know, a, a strong acid or strong base is never really part of an effective buffer system, so the hydrochloric acid wouldn't help. But again, it, it, this is a tricky point to get, but and that's why we have these extensions, and that's why the problem is out of 10 points. But that is the answer. And then our last part here, again, another tricky, tricky part. Calculate the final ammonium concentration in the resulting solution. Now you could get a, a nice gimme point here because they will, if you did have the final total volume of the solution of 75 milliliters, if when you did your concentration, moles divided by 0 0.075 liters, you could get a point there. But we had ammonium ions in our beaker 3 solution already. And in beaker 3 we had 0.025 liters and it was 0.1 molar. So we had 0.025 sorry 0.0025 moles of ammonium in beaker 3. Beaker 3 got mixed in with beaker 2 which had ammonia so nothing changed there. But then when we added the acid in, remember that our ammonia reacted with the acid and made more ammonium. And so we have to take that into account. So we had, again, 0 0.0025 moles of hydronium, which reacted with the ammonia in a one-to-one -one ratio, so it formed another 0 0.0025 moles of ammonium. So now we have a total of sorry, 0 0.005 moles of ammonium, and then again we had to show our total volume of 75 milliliters, 0 0.075 liters, and that's how we get this ultimate 0 0.0667 molar for the ammonium concentration. Again, challenging, yes, um, but you could have picked up an extra point here by having the correct volume of solution. All right. Please try and take care of the other, the next two for your take home part and we can start looking at those when we meet again. Have a good one.